My name is Christine Romine. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I have a practice here in Phoenix, Arizona, Christine Romine Advanced Medical Skin Care, and we work with Kelmback Dermatology and Skin Surgery. We see lots and lots of patients with melasma every day, and there's lots of great solutions, so don't be desperate. Melasma is a chronic, symmetrical uh, discoloration of the skin. It typically occurs on the upper lip, the bridge of the nose, the forehead, the cheeks, the jawline. It can be epidermal melasma, which is uh, where the pigmentation is in the top surface of the skin. And that's typically a little bit more well-defined, a little bit darker, and it's really easy to treat. Dermal melasma, on the other hand, is deeper pigmentation into the deeper layers of the skin. And that's a little bit more blotchy and lighter, and it's much more difficult to treat. The cause of melasma is actually very complex, and it has um, multiple triggers. It is found to be hereditary in at least a third of patients, so if you have the hereditary form, it's much more difficult to treat because it does tend to be chronic. There are um, triggers. Sun is the most important trigger, and of course in our environment here in Arizona, it's the most difficult to avoid. There's also other triggers such as pregnancy, which um, tends to resolve after pregnancy within the first few months, unless they had it prior to pregnancy. Then it tends to worsen during pregnancy and then maybe calm down to baseline after pregnancy. Um, heat also is a pathway to pigmentation, so doing activities uh, like hot yoga or excessive exercise where your face really becomes flushed and red, that's definitely a trigger for melasma. Um, other things like getting uh, irritated by topical medications, cosmeceuticals, even some ingredients in perfumes and things like that can cause a phototoxic reaction that then can trigger melasma. Melasma can be treated, but it really can't be prevented. If you're destined to have melasma, especially if you've got a family history of melasma, you are um, pretty much going to develop melasma. If you get early education and you protect your skin from the sun and avoid the other triggers, then oftentimes you'll have a very, very mild case of it. But I see patients um, day in and day out that have had melasma since their 20s and they've always battled with it and uh, they realize sun makes it worse, but it, they've never ever been able to prevent it. Patients who are at risk for melasma um, are typically female, 90% of cases are women, only 10% are men. Those with higher Fitzpatrick skin types or darker skin types tend to get melasma more frequently. And um, even if you do have fairer skin, knowing your parents' ethnic background is very important because you can have a very fair skin type like Fitzpatrick 1 or 2, but if your parent or, or parents, even more distant relatives, have darker skin types, you're at risk for melasma as well. And then of course, pregnancy, once again, is a risk factor for melasma because of the increase in hormones during pregnancy. Other patients who are at risk for melasma are those that are on hormone treatments. Any treatments such as oral contraceptives containing estrogen or progesterone, those who have implants put in, and then postmenopausal women who uh, are using it for um, replacement also are at risk for melasma. The difference between sunspots and melasma are a couple. Sunspots tend to occur in any skin type at any age and it is associated with uh, sun exposure. They tend to be a little bit more well defined. They typically to occur diffusely over the face, neck, chest, tops of the hands, those areas that get chronic sun exposure day in and day out regardless of the season. Um, they have a different treatment as well. Sunspots need to be destroyed, typically liquid nitrogen, 
um, or even laser treatments can help those versus melasma treatment, very different. Much more difficult to get rid of melasma than sunspots. So melasma is very slow to respond to treatment. It's a chronic condition, so just like all chronic conditions, you need to manage it. So treating it, um, getting rid of it, first of all, with um, topical creams, peels, and things like that, are effective many times, but chronic therapy, meaning remaining on topical treatments, is a mainstay. Lots of times we can get rid of the melasma, but if they go back to their old skincare and not avoiding the sun, the melasma is going to come right back again. So it has been thought of as the bane of dermatology for many, many decades. There are treatments for melasma. Um, most commonly they are brightener lightener agents and hydroquinone is probably the most well known and it can even be purchased over the counter anywhere from two to four percent and it can be irritating though um, so anytime there's topical cosmetics or um, ingredients that cause irritation you need to be very very careful because that can trigger melasma as well so you're sort of walking a fine line Azelaic acid is another topical cream that can, that can be used safely two times a day and that can even be used in pregnancy unlike most of the other uh, treatments. There are other topical and oral medications that are still in more of an investigative stage like transexamic acid and those um, show very good promise in the future. The most important mainstay though for treatment is sun protection. Of course, avoiding the sun, wearing protective clothing, sunglasses, big hats, and uh, reapplying the sunscreen every two hours. You need to look for sunscreens containing zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, which are physical blockers. And uh, as some of the chemical sunscreen can also irritate your skin and then lead to trigger of melasma. There are two other ingredients that could be found in topical treatments. One is kojic acid and the other is ascorbic acid or vitamin C. Both of these inhibit um, the manufacture of melanin by melanocytes, the pigment producing cells. Ascorbic acid vitamin C needs to be combined with other agents because it's very unstable by itself. There are many ingredients in topical preparations that you can incorporate into your daily routine, skincare routine. Um, of utmost importance is tretinoin. Tretinoin is uh, a vitamin A derivative that can really help to lighten and brighten the skin. It has many other advantages um, if you use it routinely, such as decreasing formation of fine lines, increases along the crow's feet area that's actually got FDA approval. It evens out skin tones. It actually helps with acne as well. So if you have any hyperpigmentation or brown blotchy spots from acne, it can actually help prevent that as well. Other ingredients to look for are ascorbic acid. Vitamin C is typically placed on in the morning and um, then a sunscreen over top. Sunscreen, absolutely the most important uh, daily regimen, and those containing zinc oxide or titanium dioxide are the absolute most effective. There have been multiple chemists over the years that have combined products, and I actually had the opportunity to work with Dr. Kligman, who invented Retin-A, and we worked with a triple therapy cream that contained tretinoin, which is um, Retin-A, a vitamin A derivative as well as a bleaching cream, bleaching agent and we actually added a little bit of a steroid at that time. Steroids can decrease inflammation, irritation from the other products. Like I said, a lot of the topical products do contain um, ingredients that cause lots of irritancy. So that's just sort of to calm down that irritancy so you can tolerate the product. There are other treatments that you can use if you go to a dermatologist's office that has lasers and, and devices, 
but there's very inconsistent outcomes. So I would really caution those of you who are interested in having a treatment done to, to go to a place where there's a dermatologist that knows how to set the settings on the laser because the IPL's intense pulse light or BBL treatments, photofacial treatments, it's called a number of different names, can actually make melasma worse. So um, it's very important to be sure and pick the right, the right device. The good thing is, is if that does happen, you know, the chemical peels, the compounded chemical peel, as well as the topical compounded creams can really lighten and brighten that skin, even if it was hyperpigmentation from a device. Thanks for watching guys and hopefully these tips on melasma will be useful and wear your sunscreen.